Welcome to another episode of Haunted Stories with your host, Scott Latea. Uh, it, yeah, it immediately uh, paranormal activity increased um, within, within, I mean, it was not long after. And I've always had these ups and downs with it, or these cycles where it's, it's, it's a higher level than it is usually or not. Right well, now. we had a teenage, a teenager in our house too. My autistic son started turning into a teenager. Yeah. And, and if a lot of times the paranormal investigators know, a lot of time activities are where a lot of teenagers mm -hmm. are living I mean, and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I think that didn't help our activity in the house. And things really did start to progress. There were some intense things, like whatever it was in this particular house that we're living in. This life has changed since it's gone. As things, you know, like years have gone by, um, even down the road, like we, we faced, uh, this is like right before we officially got like a team. Um, we, we got in a very bad spot. Marie's health kind of failed her. We, you know, we ended up leaving the house and then we ended up living in like a two bedroom apartment. And no, we lived with your parents. Well, I, I, don't want never. That. That was, I would never recommend don't, that. Don't, don't, don't That's ever. where the divorce uh, happened. <laughs> yeah. So we get into this house, and then the guy, the guy that comes, you know, to the home to like show, like maintenance guy or whatever, he's like, yeah, you know, you should have seen the place before. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? You know what I mean? Uh, well, I come to find out, that some kid uh, like trashed the entire house, spray painted, broke stuff, and uh, there's there's rumored to have hung himself in the house, and we're the ones that end up getting the freaking house. So like, why, why are we getting this apartment? Like, why are we, like it's <laughs> terrible, like look. But things started to happen and it really started to affect, it started to affect our son, our artistic son, uh, in that particular home. That's when things just, it was, like I said, cycles. We've kind of gone through these things. That was the one defining moment that we had inside this home to where um, we really, really experienced something really dark. Well, we even tried, because my son, I mean, you know as a mother, you're gonna do every single thing you can. I mean, when your son is getting tortured nightly, I mean, he would wake up screaming, and tell him, please leave me alone, and he's autistic, and it's harder to comfort him sometimes, and try to be like, hey, it's, you know, it's going to be okay, and everything. It was daily, it was nightly, I mean, it was just, and I'm like, okay, we need to get help. Well, we um, finally talked to him, and we, and we brought him out, like, what is going on? Like, what's going on with these nights here? At this time, I was working for the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, and, and like, you know, I'm very, I'm very like, okay, just tell me, like, what's going on? Tell me, I'll fix it. Like, is there so, you know, is it school, is it this, is it that? And he said, it's the two-headed demon. And, and I said, what are you about two minutes. And at this point in time, we weren't really like talking to our kids and really knowing that we were really involved in all this stuff. And, and, and for him, at this point, he had a very bad speech delay for him to say the two headed demon. I said, Well, what do you think about two headed demon? He said, Well, there was a two headed demon on the side of your bed, and there was a two headed demon on the side of mom's bed on Christmas Eve when I came in there to wake you guys up. And then he said, He wants it back. And like, it's like his whole voice changed when he said it to me. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? And now I'm like, I'm almost scared to hear what he's even trying to say. And he's like, you took something from him. Uh -huh. It's that one thing that you took. You remember, Dad, the thing that you took when we went up for the camping trip? And I'm like, oh my God. And what it was, was we were out in uh, Crown King, uh, which is north of Phoenix. And it's like, we almost died going up this trail. And it was this camping trip, like this guy's camping trip. And a couple other sheriff's department buddies were out there. And I almost fell off of a freaking mountain. And there was this rock that was kind of like wedged in all this like, you know, the tree debris and stuff. And it, it kind of helped me catch my footing. Uh, and I grabbed the, the, this tree, long story short, this rock was there. I fished it out and it was like filled with like silver. And like, it was crazy. And I'm like, oh, I'll take this, like this is cool. Like, I'm gonna talk about this. It's gonna be like a trophy, right? And be like, hey, look, this saved my life, you know? And it looked cool. Um, and my son identified that rock when she he had no idea. Like, you know, there, there was that I even had it still. Um, and the story just progressed and it got worse. Um, but the funny thing is, is that like, uh, when we were having this conversation with him, and you were talking about this earlier, Devin, mm -hmm. where you said that you looked at Ellen at one point in time and she was something, somebody else. Yeah. Yep. Like, I looked at my son and his face was here and then a face started to form off the side mm -hmm. and it was just this grin oh, and this oh. smile. I screamed. I looked over at Marie to see if she had seen what I had seen. And she was completely knocked out. Like, how did you go from 30 seconds ago, completely awake, completely normal, having a conversation, getting all this information from her son, especially about this, and she just passed out? And, and I'm, I'm hoping to get that validation from her that, like, you saw that, I'm not crazy, right? 
and she was out, and I had to like wake her up, you know? You're crazy. Well, I know that. I mean, we know that. We definitely know that. Um, so, with that being said, there's a whole bunch of crap that started happening. Uh, I started getting really deeply influenced um, by this thing, the energies inside of the home. Uh, my mood would change. Marie would fall asleep. I'd find myself pacing back and forth down the hallway, almost living in someone else's life. I would get angry, pissed off, just my, things going through my mind. It was the closest I ever came to actually suicide. Um, and I can tell you this, uh, you know, legit one day, uh, almost doing it. And, uh, you know, looking down the barrel with a shotgun because it was that intense. I remember waking up in the middle of the night, crying, bawling, crying because of what was happening. Like, I'd go to sleep and immediately once, or I tried to sleep, Marie would fall asleep just like that every time like a baby. And you would hear it. It always started with a whistle. It was this loud whistle in the room. I mean, loud, deafening. She would not wake up. And then it was like the reiki noise behind the bed, this crazy reiki noise. And then I would see this thing. And then this thing would transform into multiple things. Mm -hmm. And it was just getting, it was just getting to me. It, and I couldn't get out and we're kind of stuck. I'm like, what are we gonna do? And, and these things progressed. And again, to make a very long story short, we, we called upon the paranormal community in Arizona. <laughs> and uh, we got no, we got no, we got no, sorry. Um, we, we don't wanna have any attachments. This is dangerous, contact the church. Mm -hmm. Here are some numbers, call a lot of people, every different faith, every different religion, and we're denied completely because it was a liability. Because what the things that we were telling them, uh, they, they feared that things would happen to them. Um, so pretty much, we, uh, we kind of took matters into our own hands. Um, I won't say that we became experts, but we're like, hey, we're going to deal with it. It's just like we have with everything, we fought it. And uh, we won temporarily. But uh, it, it never stops. I mean, again, still hard to do it. The one question we get for a lot of our uh, speaking engagements, I think, where's the most haunted place you ever investigated? Honestly, it's my house. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and it's not just one house. I mean, we've moved on how many times since we've been married. I mean, it's every house that we've been in, and it's just, I mean, we just moved into this new house, and already, God, I mean, it's just Super horrible, active. so. Um, the middle picture that you see right there, that actually happened in that apartment that we're talking about. It's kind of hard to see, probably. Um, Marie, like one day, she's like, we're sitting on the couch, weird shit like always is happening. Like, my back's really burning, really bad, babe. Like, what's going on? I look at it, it's just scratches across her back. Um, the one on the left, this is years down the road. We had taken, and I don't call demonic cases like, oh, like, oh, I've taken two legitimate, bona fide, I know for a fact these are demonic cases. And the first the one is, uh, and the last one are, are some things that kind of happened with those two cases. Um, the this, first one that was, was done actually in Walmart. I was walking around Walmart. After we Walmart. just met with the client, we're like, oh, look, like, oh, don't worry. I mean, we were literally walking around Walmart, and no, and I'm sorry to say, if somebody was going to go up behind me and mark me up, I'm pretty sure I'm going to turn around and punch them. I mean, and all of a sudden we were leaving Walmart, Jay's like, what's all over your shorts? And, and that's like, what was all my like, shorts. Something would have had to sit there for like an hour to do these small little things. And we had just come back from a client's house and this was of a demonic case. Um, I, I don't know what that happened there. She also, I don't know if there's a slide on here, I might have had to cut it just for time's sake. Uh, I know we're running over probably now. She also had um, a crucifix marked on her leg as well. Um, there's another slide that we have where, um, when still dealing with this case, um, Marie was complaining of burning on her leg. And there's legitimately like a burn, almost a chemical burn, like on her leg. And uh, the word six was written out, um, and there was a swastika that was on her leg. Uh, what else did it say? I don't remember. I tried to yeah, forget all that stuff. Oil. But uh, it, it, and it was just like it was almost like burning her skin. Immediately, I took photographs of this, and like, you know, like most people probably be like, "You probably need a hospital. We're taking fucking pictures." But like, I, I put my hand over her leg, and I started to pray over her, right? And uh, the funny thing is, when I remove my hand, like my handprint's in there, and everything's clear underneath my fingers and my hands, and everything else around it's still there. We took another picture of it. Wow. Um, it's in here. I don't know if it's in here or not. I don't share that one too much. Um, the, the, the cross on the left, the funny thing is, and we talk a lot about like psychological stuff and how mm -hmm. stuff follows us home. Mm -hmm. um, my son, for some reason, after coming back from this house, picking him up or whatever, he's like, Dad, can I have a cross in my room tonight, my autistic son? And immediately in my mind, I thought this cross that we had on the wall, because it's metal, and he has a tendency of breaking things, so I'm like, I can't break this, but he might break something with it. But, and in my mind, I'm thinking that Marie walks into the, the bedroom, 
and she's like screaming like J J J, you know, and like and I'm and I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, what's going on? So the cross is on the ground. There's a cross on the ground. I'm like, no way. And we end up. I end up recording her, like, because things were happening way too crazy. There's a video of me or her, and I'm recording her. Oh, he called me a liar. That's the wrong thing to do. Oh god, dude. She like went after me. She tried to fuck you. Don't call me a liar. That's the one thing I hate is liars. Don't call me one. Um. <laughs> You can do that, you can do that more than once. You can hear a growl. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so I mean, and this is just some of the cases that, um, you know, we've been on, like... A lot of people want to know why I'm Almost electronic, always, almost, you know. Everybody always asks, why am I always the one attacked? Well, the funny thing is, is he's the aggressor one. When we go into best gate, I'm like the heart. He's the aggressor one. He's the one to go in there and kick some ass, you know? Me, I want to go in there like, oh, I'm showing you love. Here, come out, play. Oh. Well, he goes in there and he knows if they attack him, he wouldn't give a crap. He'd want, he sort of wants it. So they attack me, his closest thing that's... I get attacked a lot. I don't know if you guys can hear any of this, you probably can. But this video is subsequent to what happened here. Um, she got really jacked up on this one. Um, oh, no, you're good. This is actually um, an investigation um, that we took what, a couple years ago. And around the same time after this case, um, Marie has developed a respiratory problem. Um, and show yourself after this case. And it's, we're not getting out, we're not getting out. So we're not getting out, it's you who are really getting out, not me. Once again, I fear nothing. You're going to see a light on my left when I walk in here. We asked to show a sign and this ball of light just out of nowhere. So we, essentially what we did is we set up EMF detection all across the entire house, like grenade style. And like this stuff was like, it was something was like running around the whole house with this stuff. They were going up to like 20 meters out and it was just chasing each one. This mirror has an attachment of some kind. If that's true, then why don't you show yourself in this mirror instead of playing with my devices? See that? Yeah. At that point, I was kind of stunned. Because <laughs> so, you, know, you ask it to happen, and then you're like. Oh my God. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> well, you know, that's 
take another response. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But we got more, I don't, I don't want to take up too much more, like time and stuff. Um, th this is something that happens on a regular basis. And I totally feel you about the puke, getting sick. <laughs> yeah. That was like one, one of the few times you've actually thrown up from stuff. I, I notice a lot of things, like I'll, I'll be out there, like I'm, I'm like super like assertive as an investigator, and especially in, in cases like this that are affecting families, um, I'm a little more assertive with questioning. Um, and things don't tend to really mess with me and they, they tend to go after her immediately, almost in, you know, like, hey, fuck you. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so immediately, Marie, just to show you that she, she had all that happened to her, she threw up, and I asked her, you want to continue or do we need to get out of here? And she said, let's do it. And this is us going right back in and doing it again. So, um, was it's kind of this representation of who we are uh, a bit. And again, like, um, a lot of these things, like we asked for, um, let's see. Oh yeah, ghost communication or attack. Like we're always constantly investigators. What do we always do? We always say, hey, give me a sign, show me your you know, presence, like touch me, do this, use my energy. And when we say, everyone just, oh, you got attacked, and you know, like you're getting jacked up by these things. Like we're the idiots out there saying, touch me, show me. You know what I mean? And when they do, they freak out and go, oh my god. You know, but legit, that's that's what it is. It might be them just trying to touch you, and technically, it's really causing us harm, but they don't meaning to. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things that happen. This is uh, show you guys. I know aired again this week. Uh, Destination America. Oh yeah, these files. Were asking. Was it Somebody was. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we just aired a, a rerun of uh, this particular. I had to do with her mother's house. I showed up there. Completely arrogant, jerk off, like, oh, it's my mother in law's house. I've been here a million times. This is how often, you know, like, another case fell through, so we took it, you know, and I'm like, I'll make your mom happy. We'll go in there, you know. So I bring the whole team out, and uh, dude, you know, insane, man. I mean, craziest night I've ever had in my entire life. Um, Marie. Um, this is audio. You guys saw the episode. I'm sitting, I'm in the closet. I'm in the closet now. I'm in the closet. Who's in the closet with me? I want you to clearly state your name. Again, very simple. I have a device in my left hand. If you put your hand above it, the light will illuminate to different colors. If there is, in fact, someone inside this closet, I want you to come forward and make this light illuminate. And then there we go. Virginia, is this you in the closet? If this is you, Virginia, why are you in the closet? Virginia, do you realize that you've passed away and that you should be in heaven right now? Guys, there's shit moving around here! Get the fuck out! <laughs> <laughs> so, this is a very young version of Jay, right here, as you can tell. Okay, um, and scared to death. This, these, these, there's like little purses here if you can't see. Um, I was sitting in the closet, you know, and I'm, I'm sitting there doing, I was about ready to do the whole like prayer thing and all the stuff with the house and make my grandmother in law so happy. And I'm in there alone, I'm like kind of arrogant, you know, being an idiot, which I don't, you know, do that anymore after this. But the clothes that are back here kept hitting me in my back. And immediately I'm like, oh, I'm like, keep stepping into them. So at the end, I'm like almost towards the door. And these things are still hitting me in the back. Well, then I finally step back to go to open the door. There's these purses right here. Yeah. They levitate straight out in front of me like this, what? and that's that was me, guys. We should move around here and out. So yeah, so that, that's part of that. Um, but the crazy thing is, is I came out, I had like a two hundred dollar recorder, threw it down on the on the table, all this equipment like we just bought, and I'm just grabbing shit. Like we're going, we're leaving. Like that's it. I'm done. I'm done, guys. We're going. That's it. I'm done. And I, it was just my level at that point, yeah. and what I could handle, and I didn't really expect it. And uh, Marie said, "No, this is my mom. We're going back in." And when we went back in, Marie went back in the closet with me. And, uh, or she, the first time she wasn't with me, the second time she, she was. And uh, long story short, Marie screamed something's in my head. She falls to her knees, and the door wouldn't open to the closet. Oh my God. And uh, my, my team at that time were all law enforcement. 
uh, here in our military. And uh, she was completely purple, and uh, she wasn't breathing, and I couldn't find a pulse. And uh, my camera guy is, is like freaking, I'm like, like, I'm like screaming and shit, and he's sitting there saying like, you know, you told me not to stop rolling, no matter what the fuck happened, you told me never to stop rolling, and I'm like, and I, I don't know what I, I didn't know what I was thinking, I was freaking out. So he ends up picking Maria up. So then if you watch the show, I pick her up and I'm just fucking here. I said that's bullshit. Didn't fucking happen. <laughs> it was actually a really good friend of mine picked Maria up, walked her in the living room, laid her on the ground, still checking for pulse, nothing, completely purple. I'm like, we gotta get her to the hospital to hold 911. And like, let's get her the fuck out of the house, get her out of the house. I'm screaming, and like, I could just very easily pick her up myself. But no, here comes my friend, picks her up, walks her out the threshold of the house. As soon as she reaches that threshold across from the house, She's like, you hear this loud, like breath, and then she freaking, she's sitting up on the window, and I said, Marie, we're gonna go to the hospital, like, you know, this just happened, and she got the shit out of me, I'm like freaking out, like shaking, and she's like, I'm going back in. <laughs> and she did. And uh, so, again, that's, that's you family, this, huh? If you actually watch the show, it's very hard for me to tell what I actually, the whole entire time they seen it, I actually experienced something totally different. Yeah. And it was about my grandmother. My grandmother was like my mother. Um, so it was a month. I actually, this happened a long time ago, and I wouldn't share that story. I mean, if he even tried to talk about it, I would be so pissed off at him. Because it was so personal. That was my grandmother. I mean, so it was just it's something dear to me. And it was one of the scariest nights of my life, so. But in a nutshell, in a very condensed version, that's us. So thank you guys for listening.